Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you glory. I thank God for the last Saturday for the month of for the month of August. I give God all praise. I give him all the honor. I thank you because I know God has been so faithful to you and me. And God has really shown us mercy and loving kindness all this while. So there is a good reason for me to appreciate God. There is a good reason for me to celebrate God. Because it's not by your righteousness. It's not by the, the things you are doing that God saw that made you to be alive today. It's just the grace of God. This morning while I was going up for evangelism, I stayed in, in Port Harcourt. Uh, precisely in Oibo, I was going down to the Irebe Aziz. So, walking through the mortuary called Oweda Mortuary. Before getting there, I saw an ambulance coming out from there. And getting close to the mortuary, I saw another ambulance entered. And I saw about two ambulances waiting for the other one to go out. And it don't know me that, wow, just only today about... They are about to take away four people, and people are dying daily. And it does not mean that indeed God has been faithful to me, God has been faithful to you, God has been faithful to your family, everything that has to do with you. So you have a reason to appreciate God. You have a reason to say, Father, thank you for the life you've given unto us, for the strength. To, 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 let me, if I want to say something, most people who died, it was not because we are too better than them or too holy than them. Just mercy decided to show you favor. So we appreciate God for his faithfulness and his loving kindness. And I know that the way God carried you from the beginning of this month, he will make you to see the end of this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. Okay. I want to share God's word with you. And I know it will, the world is going to do you good. And I pray that God will give us understanding. The problem of believers is not that we don't pray. It's not that we don't know how to practice the word we are hearing. That is the problem of believers. We don't put to practice what we are hearing. Some of us, we have been going to church right from when they gave birth to us. Some of us, they gave birth to us in the church. We have been hearing teachings. But we never put to actions the teachings. Just this morning, I'm going to show you, or this afternoon, I'm going to show you a place. And we are going to see what Jesus said concerning us. Who listen to message, who hears the sayings of God, and yet don't put it to practice. So I want to talk about build on the rock. I would like you to stay tuned. Build on the rock. Build on the rock. In Luke chapter 5, verse 4, and I read, it said, When he said, Now, when he has left speaking, he said unto Simeon, Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a draught. Say, Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a draught. This was Peter. After when Jesus died, he persuaded and returned back to fishing. And Jesus found him. And also did a miracle for him too. Because he has struggled and has tried to labor through the night and there was nothing. But one thing I want to say this morning. And this is a teaching I've been using throughout yesterday and today. I just want to give it out to people on Facebook. Because it's going to do you good. God's will for us is good success. That is one thing I want to say this morning. The will of God for us is good success. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible said, Thou shalt have good success. That was what the book of Joshua said. He said, And thou shalt have good success. That is to say, there are success that is not good. There are success that is not from God. Even said that the devil also makes people to succeed. He said, And thou shalt have good success. God wants us to prosper in whatever we do. God wants us to prosper in whatever we are doing. And beloved, the Bible says, I wish above all 
I wish above all in John, John, John chapter 2. He said, beloved, I wish above all that you prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. He said, above all, beloved, I want you to prosper. That is God speaking to us. He wants us to prosper, not only in prosperity, also to be in divine health, not only in divine health, and also let our soul be ready for him when he will come. Any prosperity that comes without your head in, in, in good condition is not prosperity from God. And any prosperity that will make your soul not to be in line with God is not a good prosperity. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul in the body hair? So that is to say that there are people that are succeeding, but their soul is not in a proper condition. That is why we saw the case of Lazarus and the rich man. The rich man was rich, had everything at his disposal, but yet he ended up in hell. But that will not be a portion in the name of Jesus. Now, however, know that a good spiritual foundation is what guarantees a good success. A good spiritual foundation is what guarantees a good success. If your foundation is not solid, if your spiritual foundation is not strong, then there will be no good success. Before you are seeking for a good success, how good is your foundation? How good is your foundation? Now, in every venture, foundation determines the future. In every venture, in every venture, foundation determines the future, determines the quality of life, determines the durability, and determines the longevity of that venture. If the foundation is not okay, that venture doesn't have a future. Just like an organization without a structure. Every human being has a structure and that is a skeleton. Any human being that there is no skeleton in the body cannot stand erect and will not even be alive. So in every venture, there must be a foundation. That is why the Bible says in the book of Psalm 11 verse 3, it says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? <laughs> that is a question to the righteous. That is to say, even the righteous, their foundation also have problem. It's having a problem. He said, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? And to me, I gave a hand an answer. And I said, the thing the righteous have to do is to rebuild the foundation. Is to know where you had the problem and rebuild it. That is why if you go to the book of Revelation chapter 2, 1 to 5, this is a scripture that has opened my eyes and has called me back to what I was doing. Revelation chapter 2. You saw that the Bible said, and the angel of the church unto the church of Ephesus, and then he said, I've seen your good works, I've seen how you have been patient, I've seen how you have labored, I've seen how you, you, you cannot bear evil. But in verse 4, he said, I have something against you. He said, you have left the first love. So many of us, we have left our first love. And that is where our foundation matters. And in verse 5, he said, if you don't recognize where you fell and repent, he said, I will take away the lights, your candle lights. So God wants us to know that if our foundation is faulty, if our foundation is being compromised, if our foundation is having problem, then there is no way we can have good success. Good success is only given to us when our foundation is okay. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? This is a question, not if the foundation of the wicked is destroyed. Say if the foundation of the righteous, you as a righteous person, you as a believer, and you're seeing that you've been doing everything, yes, nothing is happening, nothing is working for you. Have you asked yourself a question? What is, is my foundation okay? That is a question, and that is something, when I talk about foundation, I'm not talking about just your family foundation, I mean your spiritual foundation. Are you still in line? Are you still on the first love? Some of us, because of the things of the world, because of the love of things, we left what we were doing before, and we started running after things. Brethren, let me tell you, no man has ever chased money and ever caught up with money. The money you are chasing will stay on this earth to bury you. Find where you have missed it and return back to God. Stop looking for demon. Stop looking for Satan. I was talking to a young girl when I went for evangelism. 
and I told her, and I said she was complaining of something. I told her that the demon or the person in question that is an evil man cannot do you anything if you only understand what you who you are. If you understand who you are in Christ, if you know what you need to know, the man cannot do anything. Look at your foundation. He said, if the foundation be strong, what can the righteous do? Now take note, when your spiritual foundation is faulty and compromised, every effort you will make will end in failure. That is it. That is the truth. If your foundation is faulty, if your foundation is being compromised, whatever you are doing will end up in ultimate failure. That is why we have a lot of believers. We have a lot of people who call themselves Christians. But their foundation is having a problem. Their foundation is faulty. Their foundation is being compromised. Check on your spiritual foundation. Are you still on the same frequency you were before when you gave your life to Christ? Return back to it. Repent and return back to it. So that the light can return. Your spiritual foundation determines your destiny outcome. Your spiritual foundation determines your destiny outcome. Whatever your destiny is giving you is as a result of your spiritual foundation. Look at your spiritual foundation. And that is what your destiny is giving you. There are different kinds of spiritual foundation and which I'm going to give you. Two, just two. And this is where the problem of so many believers. And I would like you to stay too. Because this is where we are having it and we are looking for demons to blame. Now, number one of the foundation I'm talking about is a sandy foundation. The sandy foundation. That is building your foundation on the surface, on sand. If the wind God, it will fall. Now let's read Matthew chapter 7, verse 26. The Bible says, And every man that heareth this says of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. This is Jesus talking, not me. Jesus said, Any man that hears a says of his and doeth it not, he is likened to be a foolish person. That is what Jesus is saying. That is, anybody who is here the, the word of God and don't put the word of God to practice is a foolish person. I did not say so. It's a scripture. And he said, we built his heart upon the sand. So if a person, some of us have been going to talk for over 30 something years of our life. 40 something years of our life. 20 something years of our life. We have been in the church. But hardly we practice things that is being taught. And that is why we are having challenges. Now, he said, if any man that hears the saints of mine and do it that not, he said, I will liken him to be a foolish man. So, you hearing the word of God and putting the word of God into, you are not putting it into practice, you are likened to be a foolish man. And he said, you are building your house on a sand which will fall one day. It will not last long. It will last long. So, you are expected to do. Now, Peter failed because his foundation was corrupted. Peter failed because his foundation was corrupted. Because when he loved the first love, after Jesus died, he ran back to fishing. And he said, let's go for a fishing. And ran back. That was where he failed. But when he recognized and recognized where he fell, he returned back. Number two, two foundation we are talking about today is a rocky foundation. It's a rocky foundation. Let us see Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. He said, therefore, whosoever hear the saints of mine and do it them, I will liken him unto a wise man. I will liken him unto a wise man. Whosoever that hears the saints of mine and do it, it, he said, I will liken him to become a wise man. So those who practice the word of God, who puts the word of God into actions, are people called wise. So for you to be a wise man is for you to practice God's word. Build your destiny on Jesus, the rock. Jesus is the rock that cannot fail. Jesus is the rock that cannot be destroyed. Jesus is the rock that cannot disappoint us. Build your destiny on Jesus, the rock. He said in Psalm 1, 2, 7, verse 1, He said, except the Lord build the house, they build that build that in vain. Except the Lord watch the city, the watchman watch that in vain. It is Jesus that can help us, that can, that can steady our life. If you fail in life, take note of this. I'm saying it to you. Look, look watch me now. If you fail in life, it is not because your enemy is powerful. It's because your spiritual foundation is weak. That is it. If you fail in life, it's not because your enemy is powerful. 
is because your spiritual foundation is weak. If you understand who you are in Christ, if you understand what a spiritual foundation is, you can stand anyone that calls himself an enemy. So your enemy is not powerful because they are powerful. It's because your spiritual foundation is weak. He said, if the edge is broken, the serpent will bite. If your foundation, if the, the rock around you is weak, brother, the enemy will invade you. But my prayer for you, that as we are hearing this message, every weakness in your foundation, your foundation is his strength now in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10, he said, if that faint in the days of adversity, say that strength is small. This is what we are seeing now in the body of Christ. This is, I'm saying it, I'm saying it now to the end of everybody. Believers, people who call themselves Christians are fainting in the days of adversity. Why? They don't go to the world. They don't go to the world. They are fainting. They are disappointed in God. Maybe they prayed at the time God did not answer their prayer. They faint. Say that strength is small. They get discouraged so easily. They feel that God is not good with them. They feel God has disappointed get them. He said, if thy faith in the days of adversity, he said, thy strength is small. How can I improve my strength? It's by the word of God. It's by the word of God. The word I read is what strengthens me. Let your success begin with the building of a strong spiritual foundation. That is it. Let your success begin. Anything you succeed in life without God in it, that is not a good success and it will not last long. Let your spirituality be, be based of your... You say, let spirituality be the basis of your prosperity. Let spirituality be the basis of your prosperity. So many people want to get prosperity in any way. Either by duping people, by playing people for one night, is that by prostitution? Is that by doing things that you know that is not pleasing before God? You call it prosperity. My dear, it is not prosperity, sir. It's not prosperity. It's not prosperity. It's a what shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world? The, the rich man in hellfire had everything yet, ended up in hellfire. Any prosperity that the basis and the foundation is not on the spiritual is not from God. When I talk spiritual, I mean the divine. In Job 22, verse 23, he said, If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up, and thou shalt put away iniquity far from that tabernacle. He said, That shall be built up. If you return to God, God will build you up, and He will take away iniquity, and iniquity should be far from your tabernacle. Prosperity with security and durability and stability is guaranteed by building a solid spiritual foundation. By building a strong, you are by building the solid spiritual foundation. Prosperity with security, with durability, with stability is guaranteed by you having a solid spiritual foundation. Look for your spiritual foundation. How strong is your foundation? Some of you, we are not, you are not born again. Some of us, we go to church. Are you born again? Yes, I'm born again. I go to church. Going to church doesn't mean that you're born again. Some of you, you get your life because of you feel that challenges, challenges, you are backslided, you have, you have dropped from the fire. In the book of Thessalonians said he will come in the form of fire to carry us. He will only rapture those with fire. How prepared are you? In the pursuit of success, let your success be with the success that God is talking about. He said, and that shall have good success. Any success that is not involving God is not the success from God. Any success, anything that will make you to defraud, to do anything, is not from God. I am saying this to everyone. Whatever you are doing, your success, your prosperity, your achievements you want to make in life, let it be on a clean slate. I pray God will give us understanding. Prayer, I would like us to pray this morning or this afternoon. You are going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I will make a decision today to build my career. To build my business, my relationship on a good foundation. Some of us, our relationship is not on a good foundation. On a good foundation. Some of us, we call ourselves Christians. We call ourselves believers. But our relationship is on a negative foundation. And that is why we are having a problem. He said, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The only thing the righteous have to do is to repeal the foundation. So I'm charging you today. 
Check where you fell. In Revelation, I would like everyone of you to read Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. Check and tell the Holy Spirit to speak to you. You see what God is speaking to you. I thank you for listening to this broadcast this morning or this afternoon. God bless you. God bless you. I'm just coming down from the field of evangelism. And I would like everyone of you, check yourself if you're born again. If you're not born again, this is the hour for you to give your life to Christ. We have a lot of people in the church who goes to church and you ask them, they say they are born again. Start going to church doesn't mean you're born again. Working as a team, mentally, that doesn't mean you're born again. Some of us, we don't even have salvation experience. We are not going to get born again. This is an hour for me to give our life to Jesus. He said, stand and they talk quickly and I'm not keeping any man open. You have to open up to Jesus for Jesus to come in. That is the first way to start building your spiritual foundation. You, by accepting Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. It's your Lord and personal Savior. He said, until you return back, then I will return your light. So until you return back to God, that is when your light will shine. I pray, if you're here, you want to give your life to Jesus, this is the hour and the opportunity for you to give your life to Jesus. Say, after me, say, dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Father, wash away my sins. I've sinned against you. I know you died on the cross of Calvary for me. And I know on the third day you resurrected. Lord Jesus, come into my life and accept me as your son. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me my sins. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray for that one who has given his life or her life to you. Lord, I pray that you accept such a person and let that person be a member of the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father, in Jesus' name. I declare to you whatever you are doing and whatever you are expecting, God, God is going to give you your heart desire. Every form of delay, I declare delay is over. I declare contract. I declare the blessings of God. In the Capricorn I declare you are blessed in the name of Jesus. I declare that the heavens will smile and rain on you good things. That things that you have not seen for the few months, heaven will begin to surprise you. There will be a turnaround in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm using this opportunity to invite you for tomorrow's service. A supernatural service in our church, Glorious Faith Ministry, School to Learn Branch. Tomorrow I will be teaching on take charge. That's our topic tomorrow. Take charge. I've discovered that so many believers are not taking charge. By tomorrow, we'll be talking on how we need to take charge and the reason why we need to take charge. So don't miss tomorrow's service. Thank you for listening to me and God bless you in the name of Jesus. See you some other time. In Jesus' name we pray. Also, let me use this opportunity to invite you for our midnight prayer that's coming up next month on the 6th of September. It will start from the 12 midnight that will break into 6. So join us as you want to. You need our prayers. You can get my phone number 070-620-88559. You can send me a message on Facebook. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.